Now, what we're moving towards is empirical formula by combustion. Remember, we're from Allen High School, and we're focusing on APIBHL1, which is college-level material. And this combustion is going to be new, not totally new, but primarily new for those of you. We do not do it in either pre-AP or AP, but this would be a common way that we could find an empirical formula. Now, honestly, in the laboratories today, you're going to be using things like maybe mass spectroscopy to determine this stuff. But this is teaching us excellent critical thinking skills and how to relate substances one to another. So in this case, we have a substance that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, when we do these, if it contains oxygen, because oxygen is found in two different places, you are going to have to start the problem with a get to mass step. If we have a hydrocarbon, a hydrocarbon has only hydrogen and carbon, we can often go directly to moles. And it may take you a little while to figure that out. You can always get to mass and then go to moles. You're simply going to be, you know, adding a little bit of extra algebra, but you, you won't go off in the wrong direction at least. Often, not often, sometimes you'll see nitrogen in the formula and there's typically enough information about the nitrogen to go directly to moles. Now, in this case, we have oxygen in the chemical formula. Now, let's look at our givens. We have 0.513 grams of oxalic acid. And actually, you should know what the formula of oxalic acid is at this stage, but we're going to pretend that we don't. And so we have this many grams of oxalic acid. And because of the law of conservation of mass, those grams have to be equal to my grams of carbon plus my grams of hydrogen plus my grams of oxygen. And that's going to be the key to finding the oxygen because oxygen comes from both the substance and the oxygen provided for the combustion. We'll have to do this subtraction for this. So step one, get to mass. That's our key. We are given CO2, and if we have, let me show you, walk you through what we could do here. If you have grams of CO2, remember we're trying to get to a within type of a problem. So we could go from grams of CO2 to moles of CO2, and then we could do that one to one mole ratio and go moles of carbon. And then from moles of carbon, we can get grams of carbon. But there's a little bit easier way to do that. If we would set up a percent composition formula and just take the fraction. So the fraction portion of percent composition, which we did last unit, of percent composition can do a mass to mass within calculation. And what it is really doing, if you had set up this stoichiometry, is it's gonna squish that whole stoichiometry together. So we've got our 0.501 grams of CO2. Now here's how we do percent composition. I have one carbon, it contributes the 12.01, that's the part, over the whole, which is the 44.01 grams of CO2. Now, if we'd multiplied that by 100, we have percent composition. But we're going to do is use it as a conversion factor to go directly to grams of carbon. So we've now got grams of carbon from this 0.501 grams of CO2 that we formed. Now we're going to do a similar calculation with our water. When we combust hydrocarbons completely, we get CO2 in water. So we have 0.103 grams of water and all of the hydrogen from the hydrocarbon 
goes into the water, just as all of the carbon goes into the CO2. It's the oxygen that's problematic. And so I did the same type of percent composition. There's two hydrogens. They each contribute 1.01 grams. That's the part over the whole. So if I took this portion and multiplied by 100, that's my percent composition. I'm using it as a conversion factor to go from mass to mass within. So I found the mass of the hydrogen within. Now we can finally do this little circular calculation and get our grams of oxygen. And I used this relationship that we had up above. So I simply used this relationship down here because I know my mass of my substance. I've determined these two and I can get to my grams of oxygen. And so that's what this step is showing you here. So now I have mass. So remember your little song, get to mass. Now it's going to be mass to moles. And from here on in, it's just like what we did before. So you wanna make sure that you rewind this if you need to, because this is about as hard as they get is when there's oxygen present because you have to get to mass, do this subtraction to get the mass of oxygen. Now, once you have that tricky part, it's much like what we saw, get to mass. Now it's mass to moles, divide by the molar mass. Then we divide by the smallest each by the same number, the smallest. And remember, don't round. And when we do this, we have effectively one to one to two. And they were all whole numbers, so we get to skip the multiply till whole. So we got to mass, now mass to moles, divide by the smallest. We don't need to multiply till whole, so we can skip that step. So that tells us that our empirical formula is CHO2. Now to get our molecular formula, we take the molar mass of the molecule. I oh, can't see that very well. It got merged in there when I uploaded this. That's the molecule, that's our empirical formula. You do have to calculate that. 12.01, 1.01, two times 16. That's how I got 45.02, and I get two. So we're going to take that number two, and we're going to multiply it by each of the subscripts in our empirical formula. So the two times the one times the one, the two, that leads us to our molecular formula of C2H2O4. Now, in the next video, you watch me work through this one. I'm trying to teach you how to follow a worked out problem. So when you're following a worked out problem, you want to process each and every number. You don't wanna go by without knowing where these numbers came from. You don't wanna stop if you can't figure, if you can't figure out, you want to stop, excuse me, if you can't figure out where I got that 0 0.01144 from. Okay, so you wanna make sure you process each one specifically. We'll do another problem, a more simpler one, in our next video.